are electric vehicles, in a sense, kind of doomed? So, you know, projects for an all electric Bronco, will that get potentially canceled? Because, well, electric vehicles at Ford starting to be a little concerning. It's a little concerning over at GM and it's a little concerning for Volkswagen as well because Volkswagen is going to be deliberately slowing down production on one of their electric vehicle models. GM has been slowing down production. Ford has been is going to slow down production because they quote say there's less demand. So let's get into this story because it's kind of a big one, especially when you consider that we're being forced forced fed EVs. Uh, there is a time a particular time in the future that many countries have said you're going to only have the choice of buying an electric vehicle. So these for many uh, uh, throughout the world, many people looks like they will be forced to purchase of an EV and so far it looks like this is a little chaotic because there's chaos in the EV market being that demand is down and it's down over at Porsche as well. The Porsche Taycan, uh, they're selling a, such such a huge reduction. Originally, they were selling around 46,000 units per year, and now they're going to be going below 30. Their numbers on that model keep going down and down every year. The initial excitement brought in a lot of buyers, but it's not steady. So let's get to this story. So Volkswagen, back in 2022, Volkswagen and Ford announced a partnership between the two and this resulted in, you know, the, them sharing a platform, sharing some technology. So we've got the Ford Explorer EV all electric out in Europe. Wish we could, I'd like to ha see that he, uh, being offered here and it will, uh, will probably still be offered, but this is starting to throw some shade on all this. Maybe we won't see as many EVs as we would like. I certainly don't want to be forced any EVs, but uh, VW's MEB platform is being, you know, is needed for, for by Ford. So Ford's next generation battery tech is, uh, the Ford's also waiting on Volkswagen's next generation battery tech. And this is why we still have, uh, we still haven't received our crossover EV that Ford's been talking about for a few years. So Ford has been talking about an affordable EV crossover beyond not the Explorer EV. So we have yet to get the Explorer EV and we have yet to get the crossover. Now Ford is saying that's because they're still waiting on VW's battery technology, their next generation battery technology, according to Jim Farley. However, at the same time, Ford's also admitting that there is definite lower demand for EVs. So Ford has pushed back its goal of building 600,000 units biannually by 2024 to, and then 2 million units by 2026. That's getting reduced. Uh, Ford is admitting that they're going to cut down production because of well, planned production because of less demand and i don't think that automakers should make no evs let us know in the comments section please do you think evs should be just a completely ignored by automakers should we have the choice or are you comfortable with possibly one day in you know 10 15 years being forced if you want a new vehicle being forced only having electric vehicles as a solution as the only thing that you can buy, the only vehicle option that you can buy. Because right now it looks like the market isn't that, like it's it's cooled down, that's, that's for sure. A lot of dealerships have these electric vehicles. You know, we couldn't, a year ago, two years ago, we couldn't get a Ford F-150 Lightning on a yard available if our life depended on it. And now we have a lot of them available. And, you know, in our region, electric vehicles are extremely popular so these shouldn't be sitting around for quite as long as they are so volkswagen will temporarily pause production of the id3 uh at their plant in i'm gonna have trouble saying this uh, it's it's in germany the two plants zwicke and dresden assembly plants uh, both in germany and they're going to be shutting these plants down so the dresden plant will be shut down from october 2nd to the 16th 
Meanwhile, Zwickey plant will be down from October 2nd to October 13th. This They're only doing this because demand has gone down for this model. And recently, Ford CEO uh, Jim Farley, quote, said, the near-term pace of ED adoption will be a little slower than expected, which is going to benefit early movers like Ford. Though he also acknowledged that weakened demand is also prompting major changes in the automaker's plan to ramp up production of those models as well. So I think I think we can say that maybe it's the plans to have a more affordable crossover all-electric SUV. I'm not going to say that they're cancelled. I'm, I'm going to say that they're in jeopardy. So we've got that. Uh, we, and I think, you know, a lot of why these EVs aren't selling as well is because of price. So I think it's going to be sad if we miss out on, you know, I remember originally when they were saying, talking about a crossover SUV being in the $30,000 range. I think now, realistically, with the price increases, we're talking about the four, probably low 40s as a starting point. It's, it's, it'll be unfortunate because I think the reason F-150s aren't selling is because people have gotten used to the idea that they're way too expensive. Now, I have to disagree with Car Edge today, and it's rare that I disagree with them, but I 100% disagree with uh, Ray, which I almost always 100% agree <laughs> with Ray from Car Edge. Usually, Ray and Zach have opposing viewpoints, and I disagree with Zach, and I agree with Ray, but today, surprisingly, I disagreed with Ray because... He questioned, and not only just questioned, I think he made it kind of clear that his opinion is that these vehicles were overhyped. That, you know, Ford went out and said that they had 200,000 orders of these vehicles and that just wasn't true. Well, I can tell you it was true. And I can tell you because there's, what, 3,300 dealerships in existence, Ford dealerships, Canada and the U.S., and we had over 100 uh, we had about 150 orders for F-150 Lightning. So, you know, if we do that times, we're in a medium size. We're right down the middle. Average, medium-sized dealership in regards to sales. So, simple math. If you don't mind grabbing the calculator, Marie, what does 3,300 times 100, 150? And I believe we actually had 172 or 175. But what would be the math on that? If you don't, you can actually use, I've brought my phone here. They've got calculators on them. Yeah, because mine is on the chat right now. <laughs> Yours is on the chat because you're watching that over. So if you want to just do the math as I talk away. So I'm confident that these numbers are going to indicate that Ford really did have 200,000 orders out in the system but what i've experienced is that when you start to talk about price people order these things and then when you go to confirm their order like are you sure you're okay with the price and they're like yes and we'd ask them i always was very careful many sales consultants weren't i'd say are you sure you're okay with the autonomy here realistically in the winter you know in the summer if you go with an extended range battery of 515 kilometers, well, in the summer, you're going to get between about 430 to 515 kilometers of autonomy. And in the winter, you're going to lose 30 to 50% of that. And if you tow, you always lose roughly half. Can you live with that? And people told me, yes. They'd say, I know this better than you. You know, I want to order this. Like, basically, sh shut up and take my money. Well, shut up and take my money has now turned into a good 30, over 30% 30 of the time, I, I hear, well, I'm not stupid. I've watched the videos. I know this is an, isn't a good vehicle. Unfortunately, the media has portrayed this as, you know, and unfortunately, that's the news cycle. New model comes out. The media is saying it's the best thing ever. It's better than sliced bread. Trade your ch kids in for it. And then that excitement of, you know, pay whatever amount of money for this so that people go into a frenzy and pay $200,000 for the first few Hummer EVs that come out. And then after the excitement that they created is gone, then they poo-poo all over it and say, you know, oh, it's hot garbage because of this. It's a steaming pile of crap because of this, this reason. And then they just nitpick it. And instead of just being realistic from the beginning and realistic at the end, which I, I'm sorry, but from day one, I got almost no views covering this. I bought one of these, have lost all sorts of money because I thought this would help, you know, propel the channel. And 
Uh, anyways, from day one, I was out there telling the real deal. Ford had not told us the weight of this vehicle. Ford had just talked about the autonomy of the, the, the extended range battery. And I was there saying, well, look, expect to lose 30 to 50% in the winter. When towing, the vehicle should weigh, and I had uh, approximated, I think I'd said between 6,500 to 7,000 pounds. And I said, with that kind of weight, do keep in mind, if you're towing the same amount of weight, you'll lose half your battery. And if it catches in the wind, you might lose 60 or even 65% of the overall battery autonomy. And I was saying that from day one, months, many, many, many months before any of that came out. But unfortunately, most people watch other media sources, got super excited about a product they shouldn't put a deposit on. And what happened? Ford just said the real deal. No, oh, we have 200,000 units. This is uh, orders, reservations. This is a huge success. And almost all the reservations, 100, actually, I can almost, I'm pretty sure 100% of the reservations I put my hands on, they all got converted into confirmed orders. And then when they show up, 30% of the people basically tell me, oh, I'm not stupid. I, uh, I, I've been watching the videos. I know everything about this vehicle. It's, it's, it's hot garbage. And then they don't want it anymore. I can understand when Ford increased the prices, I understood people dropping their orders. But then when Ford cut the prices back again and brought, pretty much brought it back to the original pricing, I don't understand why this, this is a fantastic machine. I'm not in love with it because it's a soulless machine, but it's an incredible machine. You know, people normally spend how much to have over 700 pound feet of torque in a truck? They buy the Shelby F-150. They spend 200,000 Canadian dollars or more to get a new one. And they could go buy an XLT for 72,000 Canadian or a Lariat 511, a fully loaded Lariat for 102,000 Canadian. But if you want to do the math here, we got 3,300 dealerships. Uh, my dealership had about 175 reservations. 577,500 reservations. So mm -hmm. we're, we're medium and I'm not saying we're perfectly right in the middle. So when Ford says they had 200,000 reservations, I disagree with Ray saying that Ford made that number up, that they're just blowing hot steam and trying to overhype something and, you know, lie to us. They didn't lie to us. I can easily say from the numbers, they, they must have easily received 200,000 reservations. I wouldn't be surprised if they received more in the range of 350,000 reservations. And of the 175 reservations, all of mine got confirmed. I don't think I lost. Uh, I think everyone confirmed their orders. Now losing about 30, 40% of those orders once their vehicles actually get in, despite the price being reduced. So this isn't on Ford line. This is just People being people and listening to big media, believing you know, believing other people's agenda because people, unfortunately, instead of working to tell the truth, often omit the truth or just say the information they believe will make them you know popular, will have your attention on their show, on their media outlet so that they get money. Because when it comes down to it, owning people's attention is the new revenue source. It's like going back 100 or 200 years and being the owner of iron ore or, you know, a st all the steel factories in a country. That made you very, very powerful. Well, today, what makes you very powerful and wealthy is being able to maintain people's attention. So <laughs> on that, I'm not going to continue talking about this because I'm near rant level right now. <laughs> so... If I were to buy an F-150 all over again, I probably would get an XLT standard range battery. The standard range battery is more than enough battery. I unfortunately fell into the trap of, I need a roof, a uh, panoramic roof. I need more, more, more. I need the most autonomy. Living with an electric vehicle, heck, I, we drive it all week and at the end of the week, I'm not even at half. I still have more than half of a tank of electricity, a half a battery of electricity. And I charge it on a Friday night because I'm like, well, let's put it back to full. And I, I certainly don't have to charge it every night. The standard range battery is more than enough. And really when we're 
when we do have a long distance driving to do, and you know, it's an issue if we want to go to Florida, but if we want to drive for four or five hours, what's the big deal if we stop for 12 minutes of charging? 12 minutes, it's perfect. If we're on the road for five, you, we need to pee sometimes. You so need time to, to poop. You know, if you're poop, from, or, or pee, pee. <laughs> sorry, pee, you said pee. Well, you wouldn't even, <laughs> with 12 minutes, for many people, you won't even have time to take care of a number two. Uh, they probably won't even serve you your Starbucks coffee in time. You'll be rushing out and you certainly don't have time to sit down and have a sit down meal on a fast charger, 150, uh, 150 kilowatt charger, because you'll end up being at the high tariff because if you go above 80% of a charge, it starts to cost you more. So there we go. Don't want to be forced EVs, but I also don't want misinformation about EVs.